This is wildlife biologist Eric Orff with my Fish and Wildlife YouTube channel and we are talking with Andy Timmons. Andy Timmons from the New Hampshire Fishing Game Department. We're up at the Twin Mountain Hatchery in Twin Mountain and we're talking bears today and my battery died so we're going to dive back into the bears, what the current population is. I want to talk about some of the, how the methods have changed over time yeah. and, uh, and you know what you prognosticate for the future. So uh, Andy back at you, you said we have about 6,000 bears now and you yep. expect to uh, trim them a bit and you're, you were talking about this coming bear season, what you expect to happen. Yeah, so we're expecting a high harvest for a variety of reasons um, related to um, kind of, I don't, it's not a mass failure by any means this year, but it's going to. Any beech nuts at all? Well, one person sent me a picture where they had a handful of a few. Okay. Um, whether or not that was one particular tree they happened to find. I don't, since we had a fair number of beech last year, I don't expect yeah, okay. them to be We'll talk about nuts in a little bit, too. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, so. what we've clearly seen, particularly since Eric's time, is um, historically the bulk of the harvest was by still hunters. And, you know, still hunters would take 60 to 70 percent of the harvest in most years, with the remaining harvest being... Um, bait hunters and houndsmen, and back in your time, probably it was mostly was, there was no ba almost yeah, no baiting. Exactly. Eric Eric Stoll's family were the only baiters okay. at the time, okay. and uh, you know some years over half the bear were taken by deer hunters, yep. and uh, so houndsmen took you know thirty maybe, right. so uh, very right. small numbers, and almost no you know less than ten taken over bait right. for course, well over a decade. Uh, Probably the low hound harvest at that time was due to some restrictions that the houndsmen themselves pushed because yep. there was houndsmen coming in from out of state. Yes, there was. Running off the landfill yep. and creating some real social issues. Yeah. <laughs> but anywho. We'll not name any names, will we? <laughs> there was some aggravation. There sure was. But, you know, you know in the it last... Was, it was people that caused trouble, not the bears. It was always people. That's right. But, you know, now on, on any given year, our harvest now is going to be about 50% still hunters. Maybe even, yeah, about 50%. Um, about 30% is going to be by, I'm sorry, 50% bait hunters. About 30% is going to be still hunters, and the remainder is going to be hound hunters. So houndsmen are taking anywhere from 15 to 18%. Bait hunters around 30%. I mean, still hunters around 30%, and bait hunters... 50 to even 60. Deer hunters aren't taking many anymore? Deer hunters take a few, okay. but um, the, the bulk of the harvest is occurring in September. Right. Yep. You yep. Know, so 80 plus percent of the bear harvest occurs in September. Um, deer hunters, on years when food's abundant, um, deer hunters will take a few, but on those years, the harvest is low because food's abundant. Right. Years when bears are vulnerable due to low food, they tend to be done by the time deer season rolls around, so in those years their take is relatively low. But, this, this might but, be a good uh, spot to talk about also, you know, when people are having lots of bears getting into their bird feeders, into their trash, they say, oh, the bear population has exploded. That's not the case. No. Bear population is relatively stable. Absolutely. It's the food that drives the That's problem. Right. You want to maybe tell a little yeah, bit more about know, that so and the, what you're seeing for trends? You know, so much of the behavior and the vulnerability of bears, whether it's vulnerability to harvest or vulnerability to getting into a conflict, is, just, is really driven heavily by annual food abundance. When, when there's a lot of food in the woods, that's where bears would rather be. But when the food's not there, bears know where to find it. They know where to find human-related foods, and they know how to supplement their, their diets with that human-related food. Of course, we, we put a lot of food out there for bears in the form of bird feeders, unsecured garbage, those type of things. So, so, so you're right, we can have a complaint year. One year we can have less than 400 complaints, and the next year we can have over a thousand complaints. You know, the bear population it hasn't changed. <laughs> it hasn't changed. It's just the behavior of bears yeah. has changed because of food abundance. Right. So that same issue really drives harvest rate. Um, so when we have these these poor food years, bears become more vulnerable. They're they're traveling more ground looking for food. They're congregating around food sources like cornfield. They're hitting baits harder. Um, so in, the, in these poor food years is when we see these spikes. Um, so this year, you know, moving forward, I think we're going to see a relatively high harvest. Um, because as far as foods go right now, um, blackberries are pretty good at the moment, and there certainly are some acorns. 
but the acorn crop I don't believe is widespread everywhere. Right. And apples are also present in some areas, but not really abundant. But other than that, it's it's pretty slim pickings. There's not even choke cherries out right. there. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's ball. 